Hey guys, it's Max. Today we're going to be taking a look at Samsung's new Galaxy Book S. Now we first covered this back in September when it was supposed to launch shortly after we made that video, but Samsung held it back and waited more than six months to release this new laptop. And today we're not only going to take a look at it and look at its pros and cons, but also compare it to the new 13 inch MacBook Air since we have two Ultrabooks here that are supposed to have great battery life and decent performance. So let's start out by opening up this very slim box here. And I will say I'm very excited for this product, not only because it's so slim and light and it should be good quality, but because it doesn't use a regular Intel or AMD processor, it's actually using a Snapdragon processor, uh, basically something that you'd find in an Android, just slightly tweaked. Now, first impressions in my hand, uh, it does feel nice. The edges are a little bit maybe sharper than the MacBook Air, but it feels very similar other than it being just kind of a little bit more lightweight I guess. This comes in at about 2.1, 2.2 pounds or so compared to 2.75 and let's stack these on top of each other here and they are very close in size. The Samsung is just slightly longer whereas the MacBook Air is slightly taller I guess and that that's probably because it has a 16 by 10 display which we'll cover in just a bit. Now let's take a look at the sides here. Uh, we have a USB type C port and a headphone jack over here. Thankfully they didn't remove it on this. And on the other side, we have another USB type C port. Now, as far as thickness on the slim side, they are almost identical. And then on the thicker end, it looks like they're very close as well, but that is because the feet on the Galaxy Book S stick out more. And then when you're holding them in your hand, you could definitely tell that the Galaxy Book S is slimmer. And of course, you could tell that weight difference as well. Now, there is one extra thing with the exterior of the Galaxy Book S, and that is this little cover, which hides a SIM card, because with this laptop, you can actually pop in a SIM and use data anywhere without needing to have Wi-Fi and that is something that you cannot get with a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro and along with that it can also accept a micro SD card now another thing that the Snapdragon processor gets you with the Galaxy Book is great battery life Samsung initially said this would come out with 22 hours of video playback and now with the release they optimize it for up to 25 hours whereas the MacBook Air is rated at 13 now, as far as actual battery capacities, we have about 50 watt hours with the MacBook Air and 42 watt hours with the Galaxy Book. So the Galaxy Book's battery is a little bit smaller. And as far as the chargers, they are including the same charger that comes with their flagship smartphones. It's a 25 watt USB-C charger. Whereas with the MacBook Air, we have a 30 watt. And I think because the battery's smaller with the Galaxy Book, it'll probably charge about the same speed. The Samsung has a nice large hinge cutout and to test the one-handed opening, um, it is not working. <laughs> so the hinge is a little bit too stiff, uh, in my opinion. But that's probably on purpose because it does have a touchscreen. And as far as keyboards, the MacBook Air has a third generation butterfly keyboard, uh, which doesn't have that much complaints compared to the previous ones. Um, it does have very little key travel, but it does have a nice clicky tactile feedback, which helps out. But of course, I love that new 16 inch keyboard. Now with the Surface Book S, we also have nice large keys. They're more squared off here. And we do have a little bit more key travel with the keys, not by much, um, but it actually sits a little bit flush to the chassis of the laptop and it's a little bit more mushy. So it's hard to give a win to one or the other. I guess if I really had to choose, I would choose the MacBook's keyboard, uh, but they are fairly similar. Now, both of these also have Touch ID or fingerprint sensors uh, built into their power buttons on the MacBook Air here and basically in the same spot for the Surface Laptop 3. And the last thing I want to cover as far as the exterior of these devices is the build quality. The Galaxy Book S is built pretty well. It doesn't feel cheap by any means, but it is built mainly out of plastic compared to the MacBook Air that has an all aluminum chassis. So it definitely feels higher quality. Now let's jump into comparing the displays. Both these are rated at 13.3 inches, but you guys can obviously see a difference. The MacBook Air's display looks much larger, and that's because it's a 16 by 10 display, meaning we have a little bit more height compared to the Galaxy Book S's. And this gives us better usability when you're surfing the web, you see more on screen at the same time. And if you're doing other productivity tasks, you're just gonna have a better experience with a 16 by 10 display. 
Now, as far as quality, we definitely have some differences. The Galaxy Book S is using a 1080p display and it is not IPS. They're using a different technology, whereas the MacBook is using an IPS display and it's a 2.5 or 2.6K display. So we basically have about an extra 500,000 pixels and to the eye from normal distances, if you're used to one of these retina displays, you do notice a little bit of the detail difference, but it's not that big of a difference because this is a 13 inch display, not a 15 inch. Now, Samsung hasn't quoted any spec as far as the display color accuracy, but playing back some high quality YouTube videos here, um, I'm getting a little bit more saturation from the MacBook uh, Air's display and also more contrast as well. And another thing I'm noticing is we're getting a lot less reflections with the MacBook Air compared to the Galaxy Book S. And I know the MacBook Air's display is about 100% sRGB rating. Um, so I think in the full review of the Galaxy Book S, I'm gonna have to do some testing and I'll let you guys know. So make sure you guys are subscribed if you guys wanna see that. But if I had to give a winner as far as you know watching videos, it would have to be the MacBook Air. As far as brightness, they are surprisingly close if you're viewing them from straight on. Uh, the MacBook Air just has a slight lead, but they're both about 350 nits. But when you start shifting off at an angle, the Galaxy Book S does a much better job retaining the brightness. You guys could definitely see that here, uh, but the MacBook Air does a little bit better as far as uh, maintaining contrast, and maybe that's just due to the brightness going down lower. Overall, I am more impressed with the Galaxy Book S as displayed than I was initially when they announced the specs for it. Even though it's 1080p, it has good brightness, good contrast, and overall, it's gonna do the job for a laptop like this. I think the one area where it's gonna struggle a little bit is if you're outdoors trying to watch a movie or having a darker scene. As you guys can tell by this OLED demo, we're getting much, much more reflections with the Galaxy Book S than we are with the MacBook Air. And both of these laptops are maxed out right now with the same angle. And now it's time to compare the speakers. The MacBook Air has speakers on the side. You guys can see the grills, whereas the Galaxy Book S doesn't have anything here. But I think the speakers are hidden underneath the actual keyboard here. And let's just go ahead and jump into the comparison and you let me know which one sounds better down in the comment section below. Of course, you're gonna hear something that's different than what I'm hearing because we're recording this, it's going online, it depends on what you're listening to. So I'll give you guys my opinions and I noticed two different things. First off, this Galaxy Book S is actually louder than the MacBook Air, at least at the start of that song. And let me say that is very, very refreshing because a lot of times the Windows alternatives are much quieter. That makes it tough if you're in a louder environment, you're outdoors, things like that. So great job, Samsung. Now, the second thing is, uh, later on in the song, it actually lowered its volume automatically and kind of got closer to the, what the MacBook Air does uh, because it was trying to limit distortion. So when the bass started kicking in, the volume went down. Now, usually I don't like that kind of modulation of volume automatically, but in this case, I think that's great. If they can give us more output for certain things like listening to podcasts or something else, I will definitely take it. Now, as far as audio quality, the MacBook Air did sound better to me personally. It sounded a little bit more rich, especially in the mids. Overall, I would have to give the edge to the MacBook Air just because of the quality of the sound, but the Samsung is doing a great job. Now it's time to test the quality of the camera and the microphone that's built into these laptops. And this is me testing out and using the Galaxy Book S. And this is the webcam and microphone quality with the MacBook Air. Go ahead and let me know which one looks and sounds better down in the comment section below. Now, finally, let's talk about performance. I have Geekbench 5 opened up here. We're running the CPU test, and both of these processors that are in these laptops are designed more for power efficiency than ultimate performance. We have a dual-core, eight-generation Intel 1.6 gigahertz processor that will turbo higher, and with the Samsung, we have a Snapdragon processor. This is an ARM chip, so designed for mobile, like for cell phones, and it has eight cores that can go up to 2.84 gigahertz so that is very interesting we have four times more cores with the Samsung now the Samsung is also fanless whereas the MacBook Air 
does have a fan, but it is still silent and most of the time you cannot hear that at all. So the results are in and I'm pretty surprised. Now with a single core performance, the MacBook Air does take a slight lead, whereas with multi-core we have an almost an extra thousand points with the Galaxy Book S. And I think that does make sense because we have a lot more cores. So performance wise, overall the Galaxy Book S is taking the lead, but this Geekbench 5 score doesn't tell the whole story because this is an ARM laptop. A lot of programs are not optimized for that, whereas with macOS, everything is super well optimized. So just going through web browsers, I just noticed that the MacBook Air is a little bit more quick, uh, whereas the Galaxy Book S has just a little bit of lag when you're opening videos, maximizing stuff. Now it's not as bad as the Surface uh, X that we tested last year. Um, that was really horrible as far as performance, and I think Microsoft has done some more optimizations, some apps have been optimized, so I will do a final kind of uh, performance talk or give you guys my opinions in the full review of the Galaxy Book S, so make sure you guys stay tuned. But for now, I wanna run a couple tests here. The first one's gonna be Motion Mark, which is gonna test the graphics for web browsers. Because this is an ARM processor, I'm not able to test it with games or uh, with Geekbench 5's compute test like I normally would be able to. So unfortunately, the Galaxy Book keeps freezing up on these graphics tests and they're showing up differently. So I shut that off. We're gonna have to figure out another way to test out graphics with these new ARM chips. But for now, let's go ahead and test out the speedometer web browser test. And this is gonna just give us the performance for the these kind of simple tasks like web usage. Um, and I think a lot of people who are buying one or the other, considering these laptops, they're gonna be doing more basic tasks, not like heavy video editing and things like that. And here are the results. We have 38 with the Galaxy Book S compared to 77, just over twice as much with the MacBook Air. And you do feel more snappiness when you're using the OS, opening up different programs and web browsing with the MacBook Air than you do with the Galaxy Book S. And of course, we have optimizations and certain apps won't work with this version of Windows for um, ARM chips. And that's gonna be a downside. It's gonna take a little bit longer to get optimized programs and certain things running with this new system. Let's finish off talking about prices. The Galaxy Book S starts at $999, which is a really good price, and the MacBook Air starts at $1,200, but that's only with half the amount of SSD, and if we match these up, we're looking at a $400 price difference, which is significant. Um, the Galaxy Book S also comes with that LTE chip, so if you're somebody that wants to um, be always connected, you have that capability in that price point, whereas with the MacBook Air, you don't have the option. And on the actual iPads, you're gonna pay another $130 or so for that capability. The Galaxy Book S also allows you to pop in a micro SD card and expand your storage. And that is really great as well. If you want to have extra storage, even though it's gonna be slower, but just to store your different files, uh, photos, anything you want on there, that can be done for not a lot of money. Whereas upgrading to say a one terabyte option on here is gonna cost a lot. The other big selling point with the Galaxy Book S is the battery life. I've been testing this for quite a while. We ran all those benchmarks, watched videos, I was testing between recording, and we're still at 85%, so it definitely is sipping power. Now, the MacBook Air doesn't lack in that area either, uh, but the Galaxy Book S definitely does better. So if you're somebody that's out on the go, you're traveling, you wanna be connected with the LTE, you wanna have excellent battery life so you don't have to worry about it at all, even for multiple days, that is the strong point of the Galaxy Book S. Now you're going to be limited as far as performance, but for the people that are doing web browsing, email, that kind of stuff, you don't need to have a ton of performance. So that's where the Galaxy Book S really shines. And the MacBook Air is just a less expensive alternative to other MacBooks if you're looking for a more a typical style of uh, laptop. Let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comment section below. Which one of these do you think is worth it? And if you want to see more info about the Galaxy Book S, I will be testing it out. Uh, uh, doing multiple days of tests and real world usage, and then we will put out our real world review. So make sure you guys subscribe by clicking that little circle above and enable notifications below. And if you wanna see a couple great videos, maybe more real world tests with the ARM chip in the Surface Pro X, click right over there.